So, a School of Rock television show. Yes. So, one of the things that I found really interesting about School of Rock is that it's ha this will be the third medium that it's been basically translated into. So, we've had the movie that was incredibly popular. It just, what, within the past five months, it hit Broadway. Is it on Broadway already? Is yeah, it it's showing? In, it's in previews. Oh, okay. So, at least it's in previews. I know because it's yeah. been getting good reviews on Broadway. Um, I've heard some of the music so far. This is completely separate. And, and then, the, and totally then this has come out. Yeah. Um, so, and then, then we have the television show. Yeah. Uh, so what has kind of been the process of taking the, the School of Rock and turning it into a, 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 a television show? Well, you know, I'll tell you, my responsibility is purely on the music side. And the, on the, for the music side... I mean, it kind of, I mean, the music's the most important thing, that, that thing I yeah, would think personally. Well, that's what I would have thought also. <laughs> and that's true to a certain extent. The, the music is sort of the centerpiece of every episode. Every episode has, a, has basically at least one major musical moment or performance or something like that and the but it, but the show itself is like it's a TV show there, there's a story for every episode and it's a comedy so like there's a lot of funny stuff going on mm -hmm. and the music has to do with whatever the, sh the subject of the show is about and we're using songs that are either pre-existing or we're writing new stuff that is relevant to the story and so it's complicated it's, a, it's also complicated sort of from a production point of view because you have to for me it's a I mean, typically when I'm involved in a TV show, I'm doing <laughs> stuff after the fact. Mm -hmm. They shoot the show, they send me video, and I write this. This is, this is like, this is that, but it's also, um, I'm also in pre-production, so I'm there before they've even shot a frame of the episode and we're figuring out what to do with the song and where it's going to go and how it's going to be shot and like how long it needs to be and like is there an edit that we need to do and like do we you know how what's the tempo going to be we have to figure all that out before they shoot and then they shoot it with our track so that everything's timed exactly right and anyway so there's there's complicated stuff that has to happen in order to have live music in the show. So that's like the first, that's like the front end of it. And then there's stuff that happens during production where like I'm actually physically on set uh, dealing with how it's playing back and they're shooting and they never want to have to worry about the music. So I'm sort of worrying about the music and like they're worrying about like the actors and people's hair and stuff like that. And, uh, and then after we are done shooting, they cut together an episode and then I have to like often make adjustments to the music uh, based on the way that they've cut the episode. Then there's a score, which is completely separate from the song, and then there's an album. So all of these things are sort of happening around this one show, and it's a lot of stuff to deal with. <laughs> how, did you, how did you even get involved in the School of Rock? Uh, I got involved because I had actually been, I had actually written a song with a friend of mine named Jeannie Lurie, who, and we did this song for another show for Nickelodeon. So I had met the people at Nickelodeon before, and that song went over very well. And this was an original song for a different show. And that's how I sort of got a chance at it. And I had worked, they knew that, you know, it takes a sort of unusual person to handle this sort of job. It's their song. There's original writing, there's production of uh, existing music, like existing songs, and there's score. And then there's like record production. There, it's like, it's sort of unusual to find someone who can do all those things. Not that I'm such an amazing person, but I have done all of those things. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a, it's helpful to have someone who's done all that stuff before. And it's hard to find those people. So anyway, and I get along with Colleen, and she's yeah. great. <laughs> so, no, I understand. I understand. Right? I used to. I used to. I was a band manager for a while, so I helped work on record contracts. So I, I yeah, the music side of things a little bit. So it's, 
it's, it's amazing that it's amazing can that do anything all that. anything can ever get done. done yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's hard to find someone who who's sensitive to to score and also sort of does song. I came I came from the rock world, mm-hmm. so I get songs in that way, in a very visceral way, and so it makes sense to have someone who understands that. But also has I've also done a lot of scoring, so mm-hmm. it's hard. It, there's there's not that many guys who are comfortable in both ways. Anyway, so I was lucky that uh, they found it. And it's strictly, you know, working on movies versus television. I mean, separate just from School of Rock, but like how difficult is it working on a television show versus a movie and the challenges? Well, TV is like relentless. I mean, movies are relentless, but then, but they're they're sort of like very focused for a certain number of weeks or months, and it's really intense for that amount of time. And it sort of like starts slowly and kind of ramps up, and then gets insane, and then you're done. (laughs) But TV is not like that. TV is like week after week after week after week, and it's and it's not it's never really the same there are you know every episode you basically know what you're gonna have to do but it's different every time and so I guess in TV it's just um, in some ways it's more like a normal job because you have this episode that happens every week and you go to work and you work on the episode and you go home and you like eat dinner and go to sleep and then you wake up in the morning and you go to work again I mean it's sort of it's on a schedule that's a little more regular than a movie a movie is like this one big project with a big ending date you gotta nail that date and TV there's an ending date every week so you have to be like pretty organized you have to be like logistically like organized and um, it's a little it's like every week you're making a mini movie basically. so I don't know does that answer the question yeah <laughs> now with School of Rock are you working with a house band are you working with a, an in, like a uh, orchestra, how are you, electronics, or what kind of it's, mediums are you well, trying it's to It's all rock. I can't think of a single time that we've done anything <laughs> <Orchestra>. outside <laughs> of, um, outside of, like, drums, bass, guitar, Good. percussion. That's, like, what we're doing. Yeah. It's rock. The score is rock. The songs are rock. There are times, there have been a couple of, like, maybe there's one sort of acoustic moment in this first season where like people are playing with the and things that they find and hitting them and um, but it's basically it's rock based it's guitars and drums and bass and vocals there's a lot of singing that's a that's a whole other issue the kids sing and they sing well and so they come to my studio and we sing and it's really fun we, ba- we usually sing um, we spend a, basically a whole day I mean th- that's the other interesting thing about this show is that for the actors it's also it's like a double job or even a triple job because there are musical things that have to happen that have nothing to do with shooting a television show like we have to like record their vocals in a recording studio and make a record so it's like a it's complicated for them also, and it turns into like a double or a triple job. But it's also really fun. Like those kinds of things, it's sort of like the way that Glee was made. They're, they're, they have another element of uh, awesomeness to them <laughs> because they're, they're, it's not just a TV show. It's a TV show, and there's all this wonderful music. So it's like, it's really fun for me to be involved in something like that. I've never done that before. Now, I know you were saying you were on set, and this is one of the things that I've always been very curious with um, with television shows that have musical numbers in them. And I've never um, watched any of the live uh, Glee numbers, yeah. even though I watched Glee a little bit. When they do the record, I, obviously the recordings are done in the studio for the music that's actually played when they do the final cut that we yeah. see on the screen. When they're actually performing the songs for the recordings that for you know the, the live acting. Yeah. When they sing, are they singing and then it's dubbed over or are they lip syncing? 
Uh, it depends. There's it's times like a choice when, that they make. Yeah, yeah, it depends yeah. on what's happening. There are certain scenes in which it really needs to feel. Uh, it, it's a choice. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. It, there are certain scenes in which it really needs to feel like it's happening right then. In those cases, you have no choice but to record the singing at that moment. Mm -hmm. And so you'll do multiple takes often, uh, but to make sure that you get everything you need. And you can, in theory, fix things later. That never happens. <laughs> I mean, it's rare that you get the opportunity to, for that to happen. But then there are other scenes where it's not so critical that that be the case. Like there, I can think of a particular scene in an upcoming episode of School of Rock that I cannot disclose because it hasn't aired yet. But the where there's, they're basically the scene is is like a music video. So it's mm -hmm. it's not supposed to be. You're not supposed to feel like it's live. Right. It's supposed to look like a music video. Mm -hmm. So that was all pre-recorded. Mm -hmm. And done to and made sound like we did get a full studio treatment. So there's there's both ends of the spectrum and there's everything in between. Yeah, because I always found that very interesting. Just because I do a was the year kid. Yes. <laughs> I it's never always, ever would have guessed. No, and it's always very interesting that. It, I always found it very difficult to pretend to sing. It's always very hard to pretend to sing. Yes. I always admired people who could lip sync and pretend to sing in their lip syncing. Well, I will say that when that has to happen, when there is a lip sync that happens, it has to be, it has to be very convincing. So part of my job is to, when that does have to happen, make it as convincing as possible. And there are many different ways of doing that, but normally, normally the stuff that's live is live, and the stuff that is not is is, is very obviously. Live. Yeah, it's it's you know, com I, I I just think composing is such a an interesting process. Do you? When you go about like making themes and different uh, aspects, can you talk a little bit about your process on making uh, music? Going about like making like major themes for uh, TV shows and things like that, like kind of the main set pieces. Cause yeah, I mean, there's there's a uh, different shows need require different amounts of that. The School of Rock doesn't really require a lot of that. There's not a lot of the score. The score that's happening in that show is usually just like action mm -hmm. or like transition things here and there, and they're not generally. It's not as as uh, emotionally driven as some other shows. Would be. Shows that are more emotionally driven, uh, and often they're like in in animated shows. This happens a lot. In animated shows, there's usually a ton of music. And uh, like one of my shows is the Dawn of the Crudes, which is the prequel to the Crudes mm -hmm. movie. And we're like, without that. <laughs> there's themes just everywhere. And there's so much music that if you don't, if you're not relying on themes, then you're just sort of writing music in thin air. You're all, if you're always generating something brand new that no one's ever heard, they don't have something to sort of rely on. Or to, to lock into. My kids were actually just watching uh, the Lego Ninjago show. And I happen to know the composer of that show, and and I asked him about this this violin theme that comes on when there's the Falcon, and, and I had I have never seen that show before, but I I watched this one episode. And I was like, oh, that violin sounds awesome. It makes a lot of sense with that Falcon. I wonder if he uses that as a theme. And sure enough, that that every time the Falcon comes on. That Falcon has his violin thing, and and my son, who is seven, was like, "Oh yeah, every time the Falcon comes out, it's, it's his violin thing." So, in other words, even a seven-year-old is very conscious of, and it may be because he's the son of a composer, but it's also, but even if he wasn't, the, the idea that you feel those. Uh, connections to things from episode to episode or like from the beginning of a movie to the end where like a particular sound or a particular melody or a particular instrument is associated with a character or a feeling or something like that. I mean, it's a time-honored tradition. It's like without it, you don't have 
I, it's called a light motif. It's, it was it was invented in the time of Wagner. It was like it, it was a it's a it's been around forever and it's super useful <laughs> and it's everywhere. It's you'll find it in, in like you find it everywhere, but it's, not on school. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, music is the one thing and thing that it doesn't matter if you understand language or not. Yeah, you can understand music, and music is the thing that. I think even in shows that are horrible, I have watched horrible things. Yeah, and but you but love music. music. Yeah, music can just draw you into something and yeah. evoke emotion <laughs> in scenes that should not be evoking emotion. That's right. We are like, why am I, why am I crying? This is dumb. Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. scene sucks so much. Yeah. Oh my gosh, and this music, and it's it's amazing that certain themes really become very very popular over time, and I will hear it in trailers over and over again and be like, oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. That happens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean there's no, there's only so many notes in the room. Yeah. But um but yeah it's a one it's a it's definitely like the using thematic material is like is part of it's a big part of the job. And it's and you have to be careful when you're writing the theme that it's going to make sense in different ways and make sense over the long haul, you know what I mean. Like you're, you know, if you attach a theme to a character, you better be sure that that's the right theme for that character because you're gonna hear it again and again. Um, what are some of the, you know, what are some of your favorite songs that you've gotten to use in School of Rock that are not your own original songs? Uh, well, I can't tell you the ones that haven't aired, but the ones yeah. that have aired. What aired in the first episode? Uh, I think it was What I Like About You. And we got to do it two different ways. And it was... It's definitely not my favorite one of the show. It was really fun because we got to do a... Uh, they're basically playing their band, they're like school band instruments, mm -hmm. and they're like out in the yard, and they're playing, they're like, oh, what about those? And they like start to play what I like about you, and there's like a cello and a timpani and like a, like a, a nylon string guitar, and that's the first time that we hear it, and then we hear it again later, and they're like fully rocked out, and that's the kind of stuff that is like, you know, I just saw the finished version along with the rest of the audience that saw it, and I was just like, this is awesome. Like when they, when the kids get up and start playing that song, it's sort of like, I mean, I don't know. It's a, it's like a magical thing when you hear kids playing music. It's just like it feels great. It feels great. It feels like the way that you feel, the way that you felt in the movie when the kids play the song in the end. You're just like. You know, it like makes your hair stand on end, and it's like a first of all. So, and that happens in many episodes of the show. It's like, a, it's. I think it's why the show is doing well. It's like, a, or it's a big part of the reason. The kids, first of all, the kids are like awesome, and when they play music, it's just awesome. Everybody loves music. <laughs>